Good evening. As communist leaders gather in Moscow for President Brezhnev's birthday, reports from Poland suggest growing resistance to military rule. In Zimbabwe, six people are now thought to have died in the bomb explosion at the ZANU-PF party headquarters. In London, three more bodies have been found in the ruins of a house in Notting Hill, destroyed in Tuesday's fire. Now these and other stories with subtitles. Warsaw Pact heads of government are meeting in Moscow ostensibly for Mr. Brezhnev's 75th birthday, as opposition in Poland grows. One report says mines are still being occupied, despite the shootings and seven deaths in Katowice two days ago. The military authorities stressed on the state-controlled Warsaw radio that the tough policy stays in force until order returns. The radio added that several thousand civilian volunteers were helping to keep order by patrolling the streets with the militia. Thousands of Poles gathered in Warsaw's Victory Square yesterday to make a silent protest about the military regime. In Zimbabwe, at least six people have died in a bomb attack on the headquarters of the ruling ZANU-PF party. More than 70 people were hurt in the explosion during the lunchtime rush hour in the capital, Salisbury. The Prime Minister and party leader, Mr Robert Mugabe, had been expected at the offices for a meeting half an hour after the explosion. Italian police are still waiting to hear from the Red Brigade terrorists who kidnapped a US General Brigadier, General James Dozier, who was seized from his flat in Verona and taken away in a large box by four men. His wife was left gagged and bound in the flat, but after several hours, she managed to raise the alarm. In spite of a big search, there's no sign of the gang and no message from the Red Brigades about terms for the general's release. Firemen have found three more bodies while searching in the burnt-out houses in Notting Hill in London after Tuesday's fire. Four people died immediately after the fire, and the police say ten people are still unaccounted for. A special delegate conference of the Miners' Union has voted overwhelmingly to reject the Coal Board's 9.3% pay offer. The voting was 109 to 3, and the executive was also empowered to hold a pithead ballot of the members on a strike if necessary. The vote came after a plea for rejection of the offer by the president-elect, Yorkshire Miners' leader, Arthur Scargill. The rate of inflation rose last month by a penny in the pound to take the annual rate to 12%. The main price rises in November responsible for the increase were mortgage rates, gas and telephone charges and food prices. The government's tax and prices index, which measures the wage rises needed to keep pace with tax changes and price rises, stands at 15.6%. The Environment Secretary was ruled today to have been within his legal rights to take over the sale of Norwich City Council houses. The city's Labour-controlled council objected to moves for civil servants to run sales and took Mr. Hesseltine to the High Court over his plans. But two judges ruled for the minister, saying tenants were having problems exercising the right to buy their homes. In Newsnight tonight at 10 to 11, the latest on Poland and the Russian view as communist leaders gather in Moscow for President Brezhnev's birthday. On a seasonal note, we enter the world of French wine with the first woman ever to head one of the great French chateaux. And Christmas in Northern Ireland. Two widows, one Protestant, one Catholic, face it for the first time alone. Mrs. Winifred Ewing saw her husband murdered in their front room. And the government off and I jumped up and sort of said, wanted to stop the world, you know, to explain, tell them, don't shoot him, he didn't do anybody any harm, while all the gun, you know, was gone off. And now that I have time to think about it, I say to myself, why did you stand there? But it's just the world just sort of stopped spinning. That's Newsnight at 10 to 11. Now a look at the weather chart.